Hey guys, Kev here, and I'm gonna do a disassembly video on this here button lock penguin. This is an exclusive with traditionalpocketknives.com. These are dropping on Friday, the 22nd of March. They're gonna be, I think, 165 or 169, which is pretty sick. You got titanium, you have the uh, jig pattern, you have S90V, with hollow ground with a hollow ground blade, which is pretty sick combo for uh, 165. So you can pick this up at traditionalpocketknives.com. It will be linked down below in the description. I believe since it's an exclusive, you can use my code LeftyTPK, and you'll also get I think five dollars off your order. So uh, that would make it like 160 or 165 for this bad boy. Um, so definitely check that out. And then, uh, after you pick up one of those, go over to white mountain knives and pick up a Devo knives, stout V2, sorry, stout V2, uh, Devo knives, premium pony stout, similar build here. You got titanium S90 V hollow ground blade. This one's 175 retail over there. And you can use the code lefty 10 for 10% off that order which will drop it down to around 160. So you're looking at around 160 for both of these. And I would highly recommend you pick up both of these. But um, if you're gonna pick one, you decide what you wanna do. Um, both of them I think are fantastic options. You do get a milled clip here that you don't get there. Um, you get a, a liner lock on the pony. Here you get the button lock. You get a flipper tab here and studs versus a hole. Um, and other than that, I mean, you have a finger choil on the stout, uh, premium pony stout, sorry. Um, this one's more of a traditional grip. So that might be, you know, one way or the other for you preference wise. Both have hollow ground. This one does have a beautiful belt satin. So if you're after a belt satin, that one's the way to go. This has a really nice stone wash on it. But... Um, I love a good belt satin, but we were trying to keep the cost down over here. This would have been probably $199 had we done the belt satin. So maybe another time, but. And uh, mill clip versus wire clip, that might be beneficial for some of you guys. And these have different milling patterns. Obviously, totally different designs. Uh, similar in the sense that you have a really good usable sheep's foot blade, right? Um, I think these are a good comparison, which is funny that they happen to be dropping the same day. Uh, but anyway, this video is about the disassembly on this guy right here. Uh, so let's take it apart. The one reason I want to take it apart is because I notice when you close it, if you don't push the button, now this could be silly for some of you, if you push the button, it just drops and it's free floating. But if you close it, and let go of the button, this last little bit here is a little gritty. And I've talked to a couple other people that have these early and they said the same thing. And I talked to Austin and he said they seem to all have that. So my theory on it is A, it's just something that needs to break in. B, maybe it just needs some kind of cleaning that we're gonna look at. And C, what I really think it is is that um, he got them to dial the spring up so that you could get a nice flip on this and not have it feel uh, like weak the way, uh, you know, normally a button lock would be pretty weak on a flipper, I think, um, unless you get a really strong spring in there like some companies are able to do. Um, but this has a really good, almost detent feel, uh, which is nice. And I think maybe that might be the reason and again, it could smooth out. Um, and it's not really an issue because you're usually pushing the button, right? And it doesn't seem to hinder the deployment much. You know, like maybe it slows it down a little bit. Um, but overall, I don't think it's really a big deal. Uh, but I do kind of want to investigate it. And I thought you guys might want to see a disassembly. I really like this knife. Super thin, great design. Uh, this is definitely one of the better button locks that I've experienced, and I usually am not a button lock fan, especially of late, so if that tells you anything. All right, uh, shut up. T8. 
Actually, while we're here, let me reorganize these because this is all messed up. Um, 10, 10, 15, 15. Oh, no, it's not. Um, and I have three. I have three T6s. That's where we got screwed up. We're missing a T8. Okay. Drop that there. Grab this. This is a T8. And drop it there. Boom. Now we're good to go. My uh, desk chair here is slowly sinking. Um, that's why I got a new one if you watch the live streams. I have two desk chairs now because I have three freaking desks in here. I have like a shipping station. I have a... Um, are those T6s? Ooh, okay. That that definitely would have been nice to have as T8s. Um, I didn't catch that in the unboxing, did I? Um, yeah, I have a shipping station desk. I have a filming station desk. And then I have like a day job desk. So, pretty crazy. And I have two chairs now. Because this one started like randomly just... I w it would lower on me. And I don't mind if that happens occasionally while I'm making a video or something, but you know, when you're working, you don't want to just like have it fall on you. So anyway, right here is what I'm talking about. Um, so let's take a look. I probably should have been a little more careful about where that spring is. There's the spring. We'll take a look. That's a thick boy. And we have nice bearings. Good job. Um, Good job, QSP, with the bearings. I don't think I'm going to swap these because they, they're good. Here's our button. It's a very traditional plunge style. Now, we do see some grease on here. Now, they do, they do that on purpose to make it smoother. So, um, we'll see. sorry, I keep sinking over here. <laughs> I'm going to be on the floor by the end of the video. Oh, boy. We'll see how it is getting this together. Sometimes they're a pain. No detent track to worry about. Just that, I guess. Clean these. Just have washers. Those are the screws that were in the scale there. Here's the other side of the... I like how they don't have an, a protrusion. A lot of times on button locks, they have a protrusion on this side of the scale. To fit everything, I guess. Uh, I like that this does not have that. It keeps it clean. So, in here, it's almost like they milled a spot for the spring to sit into. That's very interesting. Very cool. Same kind of design that's on here. I like that. I'm just cleaning everything to be safe. All right. Clean the bearings. These, uh, just so, for you guys who want to put skiffs in, go over to skiffworkshop.com, pick them up, use code LEFTYEDC. These are going to be uh, 5 millimeter 116th. They might be, yeah, they're 364th. So these are 364th ball 5 millimeters. Okay. Uh, you know what? We'll do it. We'll throw them in there. We'll th Why not? Why not? Let me grab my little kit here. If I can get this back in. My disassemblies are essentially sponsored by Skiff. So, might as well. So, we want 5 mil, 364th. I have, I think, a few of those. So, why not? Now, you're going to notice right away, there's going to be more balls... So this is what you want to buy for this knife right here. 15 ball count, right? So check this out. Let's count the amount of balls on this. Start right at the top. All right. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's 10 balls on this bearing. This is a nice cage. It's not a stamped cage. So I like that, but there's 10 balls. 15 in here. That's five extra ceramic balls that your blade gets to ride on. That's a big deal. That will really smooth it out. It'll also give uh, less spacing between balls. 
so you get better structural stability. Um, it's just kind of physics, you know? A lot of people don't think it's worth putting skips in. When you have a case like this where you're upgrading 10 balls, I'm adding 10 balls total to the knife doing this. Totally worth it. And especially if you have a stamped cage you're coming from, which is not the case here, but just saying. So, All right, we are going to flip these washers or at least take a look inside. Let's see. What do we got? Oh, yeah, we got beautiful, beautiful washers. These are gorgeous. Nice and polished on both sides. So, that, I mean, that's what you want when you're talking about washers. Like, watch. This is the back side. Look at that. Beautiful. That's the side I want to put down. So I just want to make sure oops, I get the right side. So that side has a track, which means it's the side used already. All right, so we want to put the pivot back in. Look at that, that's ugly. By the way, if you're interested in the tray or the uh, holder that holds all my stuff. You can get these at Tinker Force. Um, Tinker Force, it's also linked down below. They sell these and the tray, the cool thing is this fits right in the center here. The tray is the XL size EDC tray and then it's the lefty EDC edition. And I think he sells this thing too. Um, if not, you can always message them for it, but pretty cool stuff. I really enjoy the way we have it set up. Obviously, I tailored it, though, for my uh, use case so that I found that I was reaching into my, like, drawer thing over here all the time. Like, I needed Loctite. I needed oil. I needed another driver. I needed the finger bit. I needed the test fit card. I needed, you know, another, uh, dry, uh, another bit size. I needed whatever, whatever it was. I always had to reach in and get it. With this, I have it all right here. So I just have to grab the thing I need. And when I want to, I can store it right here. But I like having this this way so I can keep things in different compartments. And All right, I'll shut up. All right, here we go. So you can see there is a captive notch. Good to see that. So there's a notch here. See that little V cut out? That notches into that. So your, your, almost said your QSP logo is now perfectly in the right spot so the way this works it looks like is the button gets installed right wait no idiot button goes in yeah button goes in this way see this is why i was worried this is going to be difficult button goes in like that there we go i can mess with it later Stop pin is going to go in like this, like that. We have our standoffs, good to go. Here's our jaw piece. Here's our spring, right? We're probably going to want to oil some of this stuff a little bit. So I wanted to look at this spring real quick and just see. Yeah, it's a stiff boy. It's a stiff boy, they said. They said it was a stiff boy, so I'm going to do a couple things. I'm just going to take a light bit of oil here. Get that on my spring. Why? Don't ask. I don't know. I make shit up as I go. All right. Put a little bit of oil around the uh, plunge on all sides. Put a little bit of oil around the pivot on all sides. Okay. I'm literally on the floor at this point. Drop this all back in like that. Okay, wipe my fingers. Then we're going to get oil on the ceramic balls. Like show. Okay. Now we're going to figure out how this works.
So I probably just have to do that. Right? Yeah, then it all falls together. I like this construction way better than the way like Protec does it, where it feels like you have to, um, I put that bearing in, right? Yeah. Where Protec, it feels like you gotta kinda slam everything together. It's gotta be all perfect, you know? Um, this seems like we got a little wiggle room. All right. So now we should just need to drop this scale on. Obviously we want to make sure that plunge lines up. I'm going to have to try to get on top of it, sorry. Like that, basically. I think I got it. All right. I'm actually going to put this screw in down here. And here. Sorry, I'm on, oh, I'm on the screen. I zoomed it out a little bit so you guys could see a little more. Sometimes I feel like I, I go a little too close. Here, I'll probably mess with these a little bit. Let me actually clean in there a little bit. All right. There we go. These were sixes. Ah, let's do this. T8. All right, this should be enough. Now I can at least close it, turn it. I wasn't sure if that pivot was still in properly. So I was just making sure before I go and tighten it down more. Centered up. Then these tight, 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 definitely tight. Perfectly centered. Little bit of side to side, no up and down. Sheesh, all right. Could tighten it a little more. No play. And swinging. Now let's see if we still have that. No? Ah, uh, maybe a little bit. You can hear something, but you don't feel it. I don't feel grit. Before I felt grit. So I think it's maybe just how, oops. It might just be the, uh, that black grease they had in there or something. I have oil all over my fingers. So hold on, let's just clean this up. So let's test something real quick. It was Loctited. So we're probably gonna get some schmutz. Yeah, see. And you know what I'm gonna do. So, grab that T6, jam it in here. All right, so let's test it. Seemed like we were able to crank it down. Centered, pops. No play, microscopic up and down, swings. 
a little bit of movement, but it's not bad. Yeah. So much better. So it just had some kind of schmutz in there, that's all. Honestly, I don't even think I need to glue this or Loctite it. it I mean, I'm really having to crank it to even loosen it, but I'm just going to put a little bit on there. Oh, what is this shit? Hold on. There you go. All yeah, right. Maybe a little more than I wanted. Where's this thing? I mean, that was easy, if you ask me. For a button lock, a lot of times they can be a real pain in the, you know, caboose. I'm just going to give it a second to cure. Then we can play with it a little bit and talk about it. But yeah, I mean, that's pretty straightforward. I'll probably throw these in the box. I'm probably going to end up passing this around. So I know I think I said I wasn't going to take knives apart if I pass them around as much. But in this case, it just felt like I should, you know, um, to check on that. But it's good to know that it's not really an issue. I think they just added a little too much um, grease or something in there. And that's why it was doing that. Um, it's a damn good looking knife. I feel like this is definitely one of the best penguins. Um, you know, the last one, I'm left handed. And as much as I loved the last one he did, it was a frame lock. And it just, you know, I couldn't do lefty stuff. It made it harder. So even though I'm not a button lock guy, this actually is better for me personally. Because I can, you know, operate it left-handed. Man, that spring is nice. Ooh, what just happened? We good? Yeah, I think we're good. I just pushed the button too easily, I guess. <laughs> I need to break in this port, port, this part right here so it wants to fall more. And it will. The skips will break in. I mean, if I just shake it a little bit, it swings all the way down. So the action's there. It's not bound up at all by being too tight or anything. Yeah, it's solid as a rock, too. We tested it in the unboxing, so I really don't want to whack it much. One pretty strong whack. Yeah, I think that's fine. I mean, if it survives that, I mean, that's probably the worst I'm going to do to it on accident. And it's always one whack and reset for me. Thumb flick is great. Reverse flicks money. Ergos are better than I than I was thinking, really. If I really bring it up here, they didn't go too aggressive on this jimping. So if you get up there, it doesn't feel uncomfortable. Like some knives with flippers where they're all jimped like a hinderer. And I have a little bit of space. So it does work. But I like this move right here. And then you can obviously pinch grip it. You got that beautiful hollow grind to do whatever. If I get it, if I get a second before this goes up to film a little cutting, I will. I've been trying to do that more. Um, it's just tough. I really like the flipper tab on here. I just feel like it was excellently designed. It has a great push button when you get it. Good light switch. And for a um, button lock, I mean, it, it really does have essentially a detent, which is nice. Um, and it is smooth. So, 
Yeah, this is a winner all around, I think. And then the price point, you know, it's hard to beat what Austin is doing at traditional pocket knives. Like, you know, the Hedgehog and all the other penguins he's done and, you know, his own designs. Um, and then his stuff he's done with us with Devo knives, I think. You know, he's of the same mind that we are, where we want you guys to get quality knives for good prices, you know? Um, and I appreciate that about Austin. He's a great dude. I, I love him. I chat with him often, and um, he's just a good person. So um, I'm rooting for this knife. I hope you guys pick one up. Uh, use the code LEFTYTPK. It drops on March 22nd, Friday, at uh, noon Eastern, as far as I understand. So... I uh, love you guys. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day, and uh, I will catch you later. Peace.